Tash Dile and welcome to Tibet This Week, a weekly news on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines. His Holiness the Dalai Lama urges for peace on 75th anniversary of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. His Holiness the Dalai Lama condones the demise of Nobel laureate John Hume. Ama Ade, Tibet's former political prisoner, passes away. Either we transform China or China transforms us, says CTA President Dr. Lutsang Singe. Dr. Singe calls on China to heed the demands of the UN experts. Election Commission announces electoral process of 2021 elections. Speaker Pema Jhungle condoles demise of MP Amar Singh. Central Tibetan Administration observes World Breastfeeding Week. No improvements in the level of access to Tibetan areas in 2019 compared to 2018, says EAP reports. A group of four Tibetans in UK initiate a peace march for Tibet. On the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, His Holiness the Dalai Lama urged governments, organizations and individuals to rededicate themselves to making the achievement of peace the counterpiece of our lives by resolving conflicts through dialogue, not through the use of force. His Holiness the Dalai Lama gave a three-day teaching on Tsongkhapa's in praise of dependent origination from August 4th to 6th at the request of a group of Tibetan youth. Answering to a question on compassion and dependent arising in daily life, His Holiness acknowledged that we all have self-cherishing attitudes. However, if we consider how we are all dependent on each other, we'll understand how important it is to cherish others. Tibetan spiritual leader and Nobel laureate, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, expressed condolences over the demise of Northern Irish politician and fellow Nobel laureate John Hume, who died on Monday this week following a long period of illness. In his condolence message to the wife of late Nobel laureate, His Holiness lauded Hume's dedication to peace and non-violence in the resolution of conflict and said he had lived a meaningful life. Ade Tapinsang, also known as Ama Ade, who was one of the longest serving Tibetan political prisoners, passed away in Dharamshala at the age of 88 on Monday this week. Born in 1932, Ama Ade spent 27 years in a Chinese prison for taking part in the Tibetan resistance against the Chinese occupation in the late 1950s. Ama Ade became known worldwide as a symbol of Tibetan resistance, courage and patriotism for her indomitable spirit and valor with which she fought for the freedom and dignity of her people. Invited as a speaker to the first formal hearings on China of the Canadian House of Commons Special Committee on Canada-China Relations, the President, Dr. Lopsang Singe, pointed out the seriousness of the challenges posed by the Chinese Communist Party and urged the Canadian government to join the allies of democracy and like-minded countries who support and uphold liberal values. Dr. Singe also put forward to the committee a recommendation to pass a motion recognizing and supporting the middle way approach as a policy seeking genuine autonomy for the Tibetan people within the framework of the Chinese constitution. The challenge posed by the Communist Party of China or the Chinese government is very serious. So either we transform China or China will transform us. So the liberal values are at stake, democracy is at stake, human rights is at stake, environmental uh, issues uh, uh, is at stake. Um, you know, being the second largest donor uh, to the United Nations, uh, China is uh, trying to restructure United Nations. His plea for a motion supporting the middle way approach as a policy has been taken up for consideration by the members and there will be a proper discussion held on the subject in the upcoming committee meeting. The virtually held first formal hearing on China of the Canadian House of Commons Special Committee on Canada-China Relations was attended by former Ambassador of Canada to the People's Republic of China, David Mulroney, Chair of the Committee MP, Jeff Regan, the Liberal Party and MP Dan Albers, 
Conservative MP Stephanie Bergeron, Bloc Quebecois, and MP Jack Harris of New Democratic Party as its vice chairs and the members of the committee. Welcoming the joint communication issued by the five UN independent mandate holders on Tuesday this week, CTA President Dr. Lupsang Singe called on China to heed the demands of the UN experts to provide information and access to the 11th Panchen Lama. Five UN independent mandate holders have highlighted two important points in their joint communication, which include the issue of continued enforced disappearance of Genden Chukinima and concern over the regulation of reincarnation of Tibetan living Buddhas. The Chief Election Commission of Central Tibetan Administration announced the commencement of the 2021 general elections of Sikyong and members of the Tibetan Parliament as per the Charter of Tibetans in Exile and the Tibetan Electoral Rules and Regulations. The 2021 general elections will elect the fifth directly elected Sikyong, earlier Kanu Tipa, and the 17th Tibetan Parliament in Exile. In order to achieve a properly verified list of registered voters, the Election Commission directed all regional election commissions as well as the public at large to ensure that all those eligible to vote are registered. From today onwards, we have started the uh, forthcoming election procedures and all the candidates who wanted to uh, stand for the candidature of the next election, they can start their campaign as well as uh, we firmly request all the voters to kindly follow the rules and regulation being promulgated from the Tibetan Parliament. The Election Commission also announced the launch of its new official website, TibetanElection.net, with the goal to bolster electoral literacy among Tibetans. The new website is streamlined to offer accessible information concerning Tibetan elections, Tibetan Charter, Tibetan electoral rules and regulations, voter education, Election Commission announcements, previous election results and other relevant resources. Speaker of Tibetan Parliament in Exile, Pema Chungne, offers condolences to the family members of the late Honorable Amar Singh, Rajya Sabha member and former Samajwadi party leader who passed away at the age of 64. In the condolence letter, Speaker Pema Chungne wrote, Our Tibetan delegation had the privilege of meeting him and regard him as one of the prominent Indian politicians who have sympathy and support towards our cause. Therefore, his demise is not only a loss to the Indian politics, but to us Tibetans as well. The Department of Health Central Tibetan Administration marked the World Breastfeeding Week observed from August 1st to 7th through a screening of five-minute long awareness videos on the theme of breastfeeding. This is a part of video contest that the department organized ahead of the World Breastfeeding Week in order to educate expecting mothers on the significance of breastfeeding and its long-term health benefits for the child as well as the mother. Health Kalin Chokyong Wongchuk spoke on the importance of observing the World Breastfeeding Week. COVID situation is still there and still then we thought that you know awareness on different subject different issues different uh, health related subject need to be you know created in the Tibetan community so in this in that regard our uh, education section health department has taken initiative and uh, we are very happy that we've been able to do this program in a very short span of time and out of that we hope that you know particularly the young mothers will take benefit of this very program and not only that health department in the days to come will you know have a coordinated approach in you know reaching out the young mothers reaching out the community in the importance of breastfeeding for the tibetan community in its second annual report to congress on access to tibetan areas of the people's republic of china bureau of east asian and pacific affairs U.S. State Department pointed out that there has been no improvement in the level of access to the Tibetan population under China in 2019 compared to 2018. The report highlighted the systematic impediment of travel by the People's Republic of China's government to Tibet Autonomous Region and other Tibetan areas outside TAR for the U.S. diplomats and officials, journalists and tourists in 2019 a year after the Reciprocal Access to Tibet Act 2018 was passed. 
Specific mentions of the PRC government denying five of ten official requests from the U.S. diplomatic mission in China to visit the TAR and security personnel tightly chaperoning their trips. The report mentioned of a repeated request made by the U.S. Consul General in 2019 to meet with the leaders of the monasteries of Larungkar and Yachengar in Sichuan province, which were denied. Reciprocal Access to Tibet Act of 2018 requires the Department of State to provide a report to Congress within 90 days of enactment and annually thereafter for five years regarding the level of access Chinese authorities granted to U.S. diplomats and officials, journalists and tourists to Tibetan areas in China. A comparison with the level of access granted to other areas in China, a comparison between the level of access to Tibetans and non-Tibetan areas in relevant provinces, a comparison of the level of access compared to the previous reporting year and a description of the required permits and other measures that impede travel in Tibetan areas. A group of four Tibetans, Ms. Tenzing Sangmo, Sunam Tsering, Tashi Dhundub and Tenzing Finzok, held a peace march work for Tibet from Bristol to London on Thursday this week. The peace march is to raise awareness about the plight of Tibetans including human rights abuses in Tibet, Xinjiang and Hong Kong under the Chinese Communist Party and to seek support from the international community, particularly from the UK government and its people. So much for today. See you next time and have a great weekend.